Someone who's a hero is uh, somebody that will do something for no personal recognition, in a sense. You know, when we talk uh, in really jingoistic terms about God bless America and all that kind of stuff, it tends to uh, dissolve the message a little bit, which is there's some guy out there who is really, really scared. You know what's not, what's not a hero? A hero is not somebody that runs into battle with, you know, chewing a cigar with their Tommy gun blazing, blowing everybody away. That's not a hero, that's a lunatic. But a hero is someone who runs into battle and is terrified that they'll never see their wife and children again. And we have those people in our lives, you know. They, they are, in, those soldiers are around doing that kind of thing. When we go to movies, we sort of enjoy movies with the theater of people. Comics are much more solitary. It's just you and the page and what you're reading and the characters' voices in your head. So, so there, there, there's also this sort of, um, this aspect of comics that, that, that allows your imagination to sort of fill in the blanks. Unseen, unsuspected, dark forces threaten to engulf our world. The only heroes who stand between mankind and oblivion are Meg, Reg, and the Duke. They are the bold adventurers who dare to travel strange passages. The medium itself, uh, you know, I think that there's people who are just naturally drawn to, to pictures. Um, you know, and I think it's an art form that's, you know, it's a form of narrative entertainment that, that it doesn't involve a ton of mediation between the, between the creator and the audience. You know, unlike, you know, a film usually, you know, it's, it involves a hu huge amount of people and, you know, the person who conceived it maybe is not the person who directs it, it's not the person who writes it. And the sorts of comics that I think are gaining a lot of popularity these days are comics that are, you know, from the mind of a single creator that, you know, he or she puts together you know, as a single individual, and you know, it's sort of a very personal vision. That they just lift your imagination, they're just awesome. All kinds of, just learn how to read with them, basically, and just drew me in for my whole life. Love them. I think comic books were what video games are now for kids. I think for us who are a little bit older, it's still sort of capturing that past fascination, you know, your childhood, being part of your childhood. Um, it, it's now become more interest in the art, you know, the art of what these guys and gals do, and it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and the story, the stories are good. I mean, if the stories weren't good, then how come Hollywood this summer is doing nothing but comic book characters? It's obviously good characters and good stories that people seem to be interested. And it's, it's accessible and for the masses and, and, and affordable. Yeah, it gives you somebody, kind of role models to live up to. But depending on what the writers or the artists do with the characters, I mean, it can, it can pop bubbles for you. I mean, it, it just depends on what type of characters you're following and how true that the writers who are writing the character at the time stay true to what, to what we feel like they are. I mean, it's, some of them really screw them up, but the majority of them, they, they're really good with the characters. Uh, Newsarama is really an extension of just what I find interesting with comics. It's, uh, started with a friend of mine, Mike Duran and I, and, and uh, we just started reporting on stuff that we found interesting. Um, and as kind of as I've gotten older, and we've seen the, the, the scope of Newsarama broaden and uh, to where it is now, where we cover a lot of different things. And we have a really, really diverse, passionate audience that reads us every day. It's a good thing that you do have Marvel and DC going at this because they're big, they're loud, they've got the, the shiny things, the, the characters that people know about. So you have Marvel and DC doing their absolute best to get people to read their books. And their absolute best is more times than not, it's a good thing, it's, it's good books. You have uh, all-star Batman and Robin with Frank Miller coming back to Batman. At the same time you have House of M, which is you know the Avengers and the X-Men teamed up into a major story. However, at the same time, you gotta wonder Everybody's looking at Marvel and DC. What effect does this have on smaller press? Does it mean that no one's buying the small press? Or does it mean that, hey, everybody's just excited about comics in general, so everybody's looking at everything more? I see like a lot of guys who are into fine art kind of bringing fine art approaches to comics. Like a lot of guys are doing screen printing and 
a lot of different techniques than just superhero comics. And both, you know, using that for visuals and using that to help inspire their stories. And, you know, anything that's weird and kind of artsy, I like. It doesn't have to be risque. The field is so enlarged now. They have, uh, in those days, they had a code where a woman's dress couldn't go so far or uh, or their legs always kept close together <laughs> or, or uh, certain things like that. So they formed a committee to sort of stop that, you see. And it was a oh, long time. It was called a, a key father committee. A senator came down, you see. And uh, so they, but now it's quite liberal. They do what they want. In the golden age of comics, and that was, it was a very, you know, hero-driven kind of society. And I think it, it was lost, you know, for, I mean, decades. So, yeah, I would think that there was probably, uh, I mean, it's, it's coming for a full circle, just like everything. So, yeah, I definitely think that uh, there's a draw for it now, mainly because it hasn't been around for so many years. First uh, uh, discovered Spider-Man, I guess, as a superhero. And I enjoyed it very much, and uh, I, I think that's what got me going collecting comic books was the uh, the search to finish up you know all the Spider-Man comics at the time. I think uh, initially uh, kids could get into Spider-Man because he was a very young uh, hero at the time you know he was in high school and uh, even though I was only 10 or 12 it was close enough to kind of identify with like well, that's cool I could be Spider-Man. Looking back uh, you know I enjoyed the, the super villains and all the fight scenes and stuff but you get to know the uh, the alter ego, and uh, I think I think maybe I was more interested in the supporting cast and the relationships than uh, even in the the fights. There's a nice dichotomy there of uh, people admiring him as Spider-Man, but picking on him at high school when he was Peter Parker. Oh my God! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. What's he saying? A sea monster ate my ice cream. <laughs> Ending in a question mark. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing the fans are having similar experiences. in the comic books and so is his dad so we're together going to the convention. I've been coming here every year since this place opened. I think I've missed one year since that started. To go see the different comics that you can't find at normal stores and I especially like the collectibles that you can't find anywhere else. I spend lots of money that's fun. Taking her around this show, bring, showing my little daughter the just craziness and she loves it. Is that Elmo? You like Elmo? It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of interesting people here and a lot of interesting things. And it's just, um, it's a great place to meet people who have the same interests as you do. As being comic book geeks like most of That's us are, it's, um, you know, we like a wide variety of things as long as it's interesting, put together well, and colorful. <laughs> Toys, t-shirts, memorabilia, um, a lot of everything. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a pretty big comic freak, but I'm more of a toy freak than anything, so that's why I come to check out when I show up. <laughs> I'm into some things that are really hard to find, so um, I can only find them here, so that's cool. But And I love, I, I just love the artists being here, you know, like, I like to come and, like, get sketches and stuff like that and buy their prints, and it's just, you know, really neat original artwork, so I think that's my favorite part of it.